Monday, September 16th, 2013. One ounce of silver is $23. One Bitcoin is $126. Peace News Now is brought to you in part by friends of WeUseCoins.com and Sons of Liberty Mint.com. Quote, there is only one thing worse than fighting with allies, and that is fighting without them. Winston Churchill. Participating with the state in order to achieve freedom is an issue of debate within the liberty community. Sometimes working within the system is effective, and other times it's a step backwards. One of those instances has just arisen this week in Arkansas, where House Bill 1536 just passed. The bill permits residents to purchase raw milk directly from the farms where it's produced, without punishment from the state. However, raw milk sales at farmers markets and retail stores are still prohibited under the law. The new rule also requires that raw milk farmers affix standard labels to milk containers, notifying customers that the milk is not pasteurized. In an effort to stunt the growth of grassroots dairy, the farmers are also prohibited from selling more than 500 gallons per month. On the plus side, Arkansan farmers have regained an age-old source of income in a time when they need it most, and consumers of raw milk need no longer become bootlegging criminals. The authoritarians may be loosening their grip, but the presumption remains that agents of the state have the authority to tell you what foods you may consume and how much food food you may produce. A free person decides these things for himself, regardless of what bureaucrats say. This story brought to you by the Sons of Liberty Mint. Trade value for value with fine silver quarters from the Sons of Liberty Mint. Four quarters to a troy ounce. The most divisible, usable silver on the planet. Order some today at sonsoflibertymint.com. Integrity seems to be winning the battle for food freedom. In June, McDonald's announced it was closing its doors in Bolivia, where consumers defeated the fast food giant the old-fashioned way. They didn't buy what it was selling. Since parting ways with its former majority owner, McDonald's, Mexican fast food favorite Chipotle has announced plans to become the first U.S. restaurant chain to strip its menu items of all genetically engineered ingredients. And in a chilling video that's going viral right now, Chipotle cleverly integrates their message of food with integrity in an advertisement for a free iPhone game. Quote, In a dystopian world, all food production is controlled by fictional industrial giant Crow Foods. Dreaming of something better, a lone scarecrow sets out to provide an alternative to the unsustainable processed food from the factory. Kudos to Chipotle for the clever marketing and for daring to dream of a world world where quality fast food isn't a fantasy. This story brought to you in part by friends of blockchain.info. Download the free Bitcoin wallet that syncs with your smartphone at blockchain.info. Angel Clark writes at noarmycanstopanidea.com this week that Colorado now permits cannabis, so long as the bureaucrats get a cut. Small businesses like coffee shops pay between 15 and 35 percent effective tax rate, but when you substitute beans for flowers, suddenly that tax rate jumps to 93%. Because the IRS still considers the sale of cannabis illegal, legitimate businesses in Colorado cannot deduct payroll expenses or any other standard deductions like other businesses were able to do. According to the National Cannabis Industry Association, a standard cannabis store in Colorado pays between 60 and 80% in taxes, sometimes as high as 93%. At least their government no longer arrests people for having pieces of harmless vegetation in their pockets. The NH Civil Liberties Union has run the numbers and found that across New Hampshire, blacks are two and a half times more likely than whites to be arrested for cannabis possession. In Cheshire County, where Keene is located, it's even worse. Law enforcers there are ten times more likely to arrest blacks than whites for cannabis possession. Combine that with the fact that black people only account for less than one and a half percent of the state's entire population. As Ian Freeman points out at freekeen.com, it's bad enough that racism still exists in 2013, but how dangerous it is when the racists wear badges. Peace News Now is on the next news network and is brought to you by friends of weusecoins.com and sonsoflibertymint.com. Share this episode, and if you enjoyed it, send some Bitcoin to donate.peacenewsnow.com. I'm Derek J. Reminding you that peace is the way.